Hello, everybody. You've tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance, Cops for Kids, subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. Got my uh, good friend Tom Trial putting us on YouTube each and every week. Tom's behind the scenes putting us on there. And make sure that you go to the ISP YouTube site and check out Tom's workings. There's a lot of good information on that YouTube site. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Hey, it's good to be with you again. A man that needs no introduction, Superintendent Doug Carter of the Indiana State Police. We appreciate you being here. I know it's a busy time of the year, which is every day for you. So thanks for coming in it and is. talking with us. Now, this is a big deal to me. Thanks for inviting me. Good, good. We're just kind of going to have a 15-minute conversation about the Indiana State Police. We haven't had you in here in a long time, and we wanted to kind of have you back and talk about the State Police, what we do, yeah. and what, uh, what we do as an agency. So... I can talk about that for a long time. (laughs) Well, you've had a couple years here. I have. Tell us a little bit about your career, how you got started, how you came in, what what got you as an Indiana State Trooper? Well, my dad. Okay. My dad. I was either going to be a lawyer like my uncle or a trooper like my dad, and I'm glad I chose this path. (laughs) So, yeah, he got me. I've been involved in the agency in some form or another for over 55 years. So That's amazing. uh, What a journey. I'd do it all over again. Good, good. Left us for a little bit, became a sheriff of Hamilton County for eight years. I did. Uh, was brought back and uh, doing a bang up job, and uh, so, what do you see as a big changes since Doug Carter was a trooper on the road, and the position you're? Oh my now? gosh! Well, number one, I never dreamt this big. I never thought in a million years. Nor did my dad, who unfortunately passed away on the 21st of May of this year. Uh, but I got to enjoy this experience with him for a while, especially after Mike Pence changed my life forever in 2012, late 2012. Um, and selected me to become the 20th superintendent of the state police. Um, I've never taken it for granted a day since then, and I never will. Yep. Uh, every single day is an absolute pleasure and honor to be able to serve at this level. But um, my gosh, if things have changed over since we began, we began about the same time. Absolutely. Yep. And um, the challenges, the emerging threats, the technology, the, the, the way people are treated has all changed over time. Some good, some not. But I think at the end of the day, most people are still good people. And uh, that's what we have to remember. I'm with you on that. I th- and I think I see this each and every day. And I tell people this all the time when I'm out doing my job. There's rarely a day goes by that somebody doesn't stop me and say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for what you're doing. Isn't that awesome? And it is. And right. it's amazing. And it, it's uh, it's lovely that we've got the job where somebody can do that and they uh, still respect. But uh, it's becoming challenging, isn't it? It has. It has. Extremely challenging. Um, the worldwide has become challenging, and, and uh, not only in our profession, but uh, the profession of first responders has become challenging. But uh, as an ISP agency, I, I believe we're looked at uh, and held to a higher standard, and that's something that uh, we've earned throughout the years, don't you think? I, I, I think that's exactly right. And that higher standard is, if we have to ask ourselves what we're about to do is wrong, it is. Right. 100% of the time. If we have to wonder if it's wrong, it is. And we, the, other, the other piece of this puzzle that I've seen, again, since I was a little boy, is you have to understand that you're going to give way more than you'll ever receive. Absolutely. And if you're willing to accept that challenge mm-hmm. uh, and that duty and that responsibility in today's age, uh, we can make our world a better place. Well, let's talk a little bit about our agency, what we do. Uh, we're a full safe service agency. There are a lot of people, when they see us out on the road, uh, they see us on the road, stopping the cars, doing the uh, assistance with the vehicles. But we are a full service agency, aren't we? We are. We are. And I've learned over this last almost six years now that we have three kinds of policing in Indiana. We have a rural component, which is the most significant for us. We have the urban component, which is in the Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Evansville, uh, northwest Indiana, um, in those metropolitan areas. Right. And then we have a combination of the two, and particularly in those contiguous counties around those urban areas. So the, our rules are very different. Um, in, in some places around Indiana, we, we really literally are the police. Yes. We do uh, just about everything in those local communities. Uh, in those urban areas, we're in the support role. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's okay. That, that, right. That's okay because we can't be all things to all people. So the biggest challenge for me, particularly since we have almost the same number of people today we had in 1984 when I began, was to properly prepare us for future growth. And we do that by taking care of what we currently have. And um, I, I think we're getting there. We're not there yet, but but we're getting there. If the governor challenged me today to, to hire an additional you know, arbitrary number, 500, whatever right. that number is, uh, the likelihood of being able to do that is very remote. Um, but no, the application pool is significantly lower than it used to be before. Absolutely. And we don't have the, the infrastructure in place to support an agency upwards of 1,800 troopers. Now, I think we're getting closer to doing that. But just fleet as an example. Fleet is a, is a huge challenge. It always has been, yeah. likely always will be. But until we modernize and, may, and have a sustainable fleet, 
I couldn't, the clear conscience couldn't, couldn't bring people on. Yeah, couldn't bring that many people yeah, on. Yeah, I with just that couldn't time. do it. Just couldn't do it. And a lot of people don't realize, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but we primarily, we've got 13 different police agencies around the state. Would you agree? Yeah, really, 14. 14. Yeah. I mean, with yeah. the toll road. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's I mean, right. You look at the different areas. You've got 13 different, 14 different areas of uh, police agencies that you have to manage from up here, but each lieutenant manages throughout there, too. So there's, different policing throughout different parts of the of the state and I've, I've ever since day one i told the district lieutenants and field command i'm not ever going to tell you how to run your districts because i don't understand them yeah they're all different and that the, if, if if we ever try and make them all the same we'll fail right they have to have they all have their own dna and even there's even different dna within those districts oh. um so that that's a big challenge and and the the, the work that they do is so meaningful and so very real and you hit on uh, the numbers uh 1984 when we started uh, about the same. What number are we at there? Uh, we're, we're we're somewhere north of twelve hundred. Okay, and it, it obviously it varies. We have recruit school in place right now, um, but at that time when we started, Richie, we didn't have all of these specialties that we have today. Absolutely. So we've really had to morph by identifying emerging threats and trends, and understand that again we can't be all things to all people. We can't do things because we say we always have done them. Right. And and then transition from 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 generalist to specialist. And I, I, I say that with, with um, uh, a bit of clarification because we'll never abdicate the role of that trooper in the field. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what we have to do is, again, is identify what can we do that other agencies can't. What right. should we Where do? Where can we add? And what can we do oftentimes are different. So whether that be with aviation, whether that be with full-time SWAT, specialty teams, EOD, hostage crisis negotiators, um, uh, certainly SCUBA. Uh, aviation, crime scene technicians, laboratory systems, that list can just go on and on and on of what we can do it's just simply because we're such a large agency. And uh, the challenge is finding balance in all those mm-hmm. specialties. And then, but also it's what's important to me is giving folks career paths. Right. Yeah. And somewhere to go. I'd love for a, for a guy or a young gal to come out of recruit school and say, boy, eventually I want to do this. Mm-hmm. And that's our job and our, our responsibility to help guide them to get them there through professional development and the like. So it's it's um, it's an agency that never that never sleeps, right? And yeah. it's relentless. And you hit on it here a little bit. I wanted to talk about this something that kind of uh, was neglected for a while, but you've brought back in um, leaps and bounds is our aviation section. Yeah, and I think it's a big area that we've got to offer uh, that uh, a lot of departments don't have that uh, asset, and right. and that's become it's really taken off, hasn't it? Oh, it's it's critical. It's a critical component of protecting people. Uh, we've been doing it for generations, literally for generations since right. the 40s within the ISP. And um, Governor Holcomb has allowed us to just truly expand and rebuild our aviation section. It just takes uh, finding one lost child yeah. Or, yeah. An, or an Alzheimer's patient um, before he or she dies mm-hmm. or finding a violent felon that's hiding in the woods. Three scenarios that actually happened in Indiana before we had air assets. And now I watch those reports come out of when these aircraft are airborne and what they can do and the technology associated, which we don't want to necessarily talk about. Right. Uh, but that technology is very, very real. And um, uh, it's it, it just absolutely necessary. So we're in a very unusual position in Indiana. We have assets. Now we have to build around those assets. Usually it's the other way around where we have the, 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 the architecture, the foundation of an aviation section but not assets. Mm-hmm. So we're doing it in an inverted, inverse way. Um, so now we have over $10 million worth of assets. We have three helicopters and two airplanes. And uh, now we build a sustainable model. So we have to do what we say we do. And we can't be available 24-7 yet. We're not built that way. All right. But a long-term sustainable location and then um, building those those component pieces of, of aviation because historically as you'll remember the yeah. pilot was the pilot he operated the equipment inside the aircraft yeah. and flew the aircraft all nighttime yeah <laughs> well now it's it's not that way we have we have a task a, ta- a, a, a flight officer that's going to be with the pilot they're flying with nvgs with night vision yeah um, and it's really highly highly technical so the pilot is the pilot but that's all he does right yeah and then that flight officer is the one that's going to find a bad guy or or the lost, lost child. child or an Alzheimer's patient that yeah. wandered away. And that's something that's just because of the technology that's come aboard yeah. and how we uh, how we do things now. But it, it also uh, is much easier to operate that way also for the pilot to take off and to be concentrating on what he's doing. That's right. And the spotter to be out there doing what they're doing. Yeah, you know, and even, even flying is different south than it is north. Yeah. I, I flew up to northern Indiana the other day, actually two days in a row. And the pilot was telling me, you know, here, even at nighttime with NVGs, we, we can set this helicopter down almost anywhere if we have a problem. 
But in Southern Indiana at nighttime, you can't do that. <laughs> there's trees, there's there's rolling hills, yeah. and it's not near as the visible visibility from the air is very different. So we had some critics in regards to the NVGs um, and night vision. But boy, get up there one time at nighttime when the, when it's not a clear night, mm-hmm. and the disorientation is very real. So that it, it's um, it's it's a huge component to the ISP. I think it's sustainable now. And I'm very proud of it. We found an Alzheimer's patient in a, in a, in a cornfield seven minutes after lifting off in, in Hancock County a couple of months ago. That makes it worth it. It was that 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 made all this these last nearly six years of of just real challenging times made it made it all worthwhile because yeah. yeah. somebody loves that woman. Absolutely, we got to get her back. Yeah. Well, again, you're listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Lines, cops for kids. My special guest here is uh, Superintendent Doug Carter, and we're just talking about Indiana State Police in a whole and. Um, Superintendent, one of the other things I think that we're great with, and something that's uh, I believe we're expanding on here, is the laboratory division. Yeah, I mean that's uh, yeah. leaps and bounds, and with the DNA that's come aboard right now that we're we're testing with the uh, uh, with a felon or with somebody that's arrested now, uh, felons arrested. That's really taken off, hasn't it? The final step for the new laboratories was yesterday, and down in Evansville, we, we received thirty million dollars to build two facilities, one in Lowell, one in Fort Wayne. And the analogy that I always use is when these laboratories were built in the mid-1970s, Richie, they, they were built with only a pipe dream of DNA. Nobody really knew what DNA was. They thought it was possible eventually. Right. But then we morphed into, the, into this ability to, to, to test the DNA on tangible things, cups, glasses, watches, whatever that might be. Right. And we had the capacity at that time space from a space-wise to do it. Now we, we do DNA, trace DNA on things we can't, the human eye can't see. Right. And we're doing it in, in, in literally in closets. <laughs> in a 7,000 square foot facility, but not much longer, not right. much longer. We're going to transition to a 23,000 square foot laboratory in three different locations around Indiana that will meet our laboratory needs uh, for years and years to come. And I'm really, really proud of that. Again, Governor Holcomb has been hugely supportive of these big projects that have huge price tags, but also how important it is because remember, nobody else does this this work. Right, exactly. Uh, Indianapolis has its own crime lab. We support them as much as we can, but we are the we are the primary laboratory for all of Indiana and every police agency. So it's a daunting task. And that's something that uh, we can provide that, of course, uh, the other agencies can't afford, not right. expected to afford. And um, But the courts expect it nowadays, they don't do. they? They do. They do. And there's a certification now that is going to be really, really necessary. And, 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 and should be it should be. We should be held to a very, very high standard of, of, of excellence in our laboratory system. And every time our CR scientists and support staff and Eric Lawrence and Steve Holland yes. and all those people that have given their entire lives um, to this behind, from behind the scenes, I mean, they do extraordinary work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Put some really, really bad people away for a long, long time. And yeah. I couldn't be more proud of them. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to support them in a way that we give them the space, the things, the equipment, and the, the technology that they need. So when are you expecting that to take off again? You say it was signed yesterday? We'll build, a, we'll build two facilities, one in Lowell, one in Fort Wayne, concurrently. And construction, we would expect to begin in the spring of 19. Wow. Next year. That's going to be great. It's an, it's an amazing opportunity for us. Again, almost 50 years in the making. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot happening, a lot happening within the ISP, and, and we're fairly a new agency. Uh, we're not. We are. We've not been that. All things considered. Yeah, are. all things considered, we've been I and mean, we've taken off, and and uh, the the leaps and bounds that we've done throughout the small time that we've been here has been amazing. You know, last night I was at mass with my family, and I had a prisoner come up to me and say, "Hey, what, whatever happened with the plane crash in 1934 in Chesterton, <laughs> Indiana?" <laughs> And he was an older fellow, and I, I, I said, um, I, I really, let me check, before let me my, check time, my notes. <laughs> and I said, we as an agency started in 1933 as a, as a police agency right. in 1933. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to dig into that a little bit because my dad grew up in Chesterton, so I want to know about that plane crash. Wow. Yeah. So it was interesting. So he remembered really that. that long ago. He did. He did. Yeah. So I'm going to find out about that. <laughs> and get back with him. And so let back. that guy know that we're going to be on it. I, I will get back with him and let him know that we had nothing to do at the time, that we were 11 months old. <laughs> Very likely. Well, Superintendent, we're down to our last 45 seconds. I surely appreciate you taking the time to come in here and, and talk to us about this and uh, looking forward to uh, what the agency is going to do in our next uh, time here. Well, it's, it's good for me to be able to say, tell you thank you very publicly well, thank on you. YouTube and, and hear what you've done over these many, many years. I appreciate uh, you, that. As you, as you venture out into the new venture that um, I think is going to change your life forever as a sheriff in Morgan County. Yep. And I uh, hope you'll stay in touch with us. Absolutely. Well, we will do. And uh, I appreciate all the... Uh, assistance from you and and captain burston and get me through here where i'm at now you're stuck with us <laughs> yeah, whether you're here or gone <laughs> again you've been listening to the indiana state police road show brought to you by the indiana state police alliance cops for kids superintendent doug carter 
appreciate you being here. Thanks again. It's we'll catch pleasure. you next week on the Roadshow. Roadshow is out. <laughs>